In this video, we'll look at Group, Align, Mirror and Ruler. In Tinkercad, we're working with pre-made 3D shapes and objects. So what we spend most of our time doing is cutting and combining these shapes to make new and more complex designs. When dragging a shape onto the face of an existing shape or model, you'll see the screen plane. This is allowing you to snap your new shape onto the surface or face of an existing shape. This is useful when you want to build on different faces of a model. You can click away to deselect. And remember that the new shape is just on the surface of the existing shape and it's not cutting into it. If I take a cube here and resize it and then grab another cube, you can see that the colored shapes available to us are defaulted to solid. But we can choose whole to use this shape to cut into the cuboid. Now to integrate these shapes, we select them by drawing a box around them and then choosing group. Now the two shapes become one and they're treated as one model. If I want to make any changes, I first need to ungroup and this separates the model into its shapes and then allows me to make individual changes. Make sure to click away to deselect the shapes and then select the shape that you want to adjust and then group again. Remember, if your model is made up of a number of shapes, you'll need to ungroup a number of times to get back to its separate parts. Now looking at my doorway, I can see that it's not aligned to the main house structure. I select the shape by drawing a box around them I ungroup them and then choose the Align tool. I see different options depending on which angle I'm looking at my piece. And you can see from the front view that I can align it to the top, middle or bottom. You can see a yellow outline of where the aligned pieces will end up as I hover over each dot. When I click on the black dot, it becomes greyed out to show me that it's now aligned to the bottom. Now that it's aligned to the bottom, I want to center it. So I change my angle and I see more align options. I click on the center black dot and this aligns the doorway to the center. Here's another example. When I select both shapes and choose align, I get align options on each X, Y and Z plane. Remember to go to the view that you need to to check your alignment. This is probably a good time to remind you about the flat and perspective view options. Choosing flat will give you a clearer view of whether or not your pieces are aligned. I can see the align options on the X and Y plane, and you can see the yellow outline previewing how things will look as you hover over each dot. I want to center the sphere on my cylinder, and so I choose the center dot on the Y and X plane. Now to make the sphere a hole, I click away and then select the sphere. Then select hole, and now I can group them. Remember to use the black cone to lift and drop a piece off the work plane. Here I've dropped the sphere into my cylinder in order to cut into it. And it's good to note that trying to align multiple shapes can get tricky. So just select two shapes at a time until you get the hang of things. The mirror or flip option can be really useful and save you time rotating pieces. You have three options to mirror your piece. Hover over the arrows to see the preview and click on the arrow when you want to flip it. You can use this feature to create the other side of a piece that you're designing. When you're combining shapes to make new pieces, it can be difficult to know the exact sizing of your new, more complex pieces. The ruler can be used to give you measurements on the pieces that you're working with in your project. Click on the ruler tool and then click it at the corner of one of your pieces. This is your origin point. Then click on a piece and you'll get the size and distance measurements from your origin, which can sometimes be helpful. Click on X to dismiss the ruler.